In this tutorial, I am walking through something that is so simple, right? Shooting. It's not simple, at least I didn't think so. It's actually fairly complicated to get all the physics, the control mechanisms, and the general movement of the bullets or missiles or probably projectiles right. I'm going to walk through step by step the assets and the code I use. It's linked below in the description. Let's get started. I have already set up a tank and the main cannon, which I can control. If you are interested in that part of this game, you should check out my previous video. However, if you're wanting to continue to build onto the tank game or make your own weapon shoot in Unity, this is for you. All right. Now let's talk about the aiming mechanism here and then how to actually fire a projectile. I'm going to go ahead and stop. To do this, what we're going to need is a, well, when shooting, if you look down the scope, also if you look down the scope of a tank, so I'm told, you would have a crosshairs, right, for aiming purposes. And that's what the players are often going to expect. Let's go to our handy dandy sprites. And I believe it's under HUD. Yep. Uh, HUD, by the way, is heads up display. Here's the cursor. I'm going to go ahead and add one of these to our game screen. That won't let me. To our scene. Let me zoom out here. And let me drop one like here. All right. We're not going to be able to. Oh, it's fighting me. OK, here. We're not going to be able to see it yet. Well, at least not really. We're going to want to increase the size, first of all. And now let's reset it to its position to zero, zero. It disappears behind the background, which is fine. We're just going to go ahead now and add a sorting layer. So we already have the player. Let's go ahead and add one plus called HUD for HUD. That would be heads up display, like I said, and that would be over everything. So let's just make sure we got this on our HUD category and we can pull it up to see it that's going to be roughly the size okay now let's have it follow our mouse so instead of the player seeing a mouse like they do now we'll have them see a crosshairs for that we're going to use actually the main camera and we're going to add a script and i'm going to call this honestly not just camera script because it's going to do more than that so i'm going to say controller script or manager script maybe manager script and create there we are let's get a bit organized though script into here scripts there we are manager okay so what we're going to add to this is a variable for that cursor for the cursor image so that's going to be a public game object cursor and then we're also going to want to be able to keep track of where the mouse is on the screen because we're going to want the cursor to be the mouse or where it is. So public. Oh, no, nope, my bad. And I'm just going to call this mouse vector just to keep it straightforward. It's the mouse vector. <laughs> All right. Now, what are we going to do first? First off, we're going to say cursor dot visible equals false. And that's not the cursor or here, what we named, that's the actual cursor. We're telling the game, we're telling Unity, hey, hide their mouse cursor because we want to show them this instead. I'm going to get rid of these default comments. And so first, we need to make sure we know where the mouse is. To do that, I got Now, what this is doing is we're going to create a new vector. And what's that vector going to be? Well, it's going to be the position of of the X of the mouse or the X position, the Y position and transform Z. So whatever Z was already, we don't need to mess with Z, remember, because this is a two dimensional field. So X, Y, Z would be up and down. So we don't care what Z is, just leave the mouse Z's alone. And that's what this does. Grab the mouse, tra grab its transform position dot Z. So whatever the transform of the, well, I guess the camera is, just leave it alone. We're not messing with it. All right. Now, where do we want our cursor to go? Well. Oh, we need one more vector three up here. Target, there we are. And so we're going to have it go to the target. And then. So what this is going to be doing, we are getting that mouse's vector, target vector, transform to the camera, get the component, the camera, screen to world point mouse vector. So we're saying whatever point the whatever point on the screen the mouse is at, 
set it up to our whole world, our whole grid, our whole uh, system that we have in place that the player is playing upon, such as the canvas, and position that within the world related to the screen. Now, once we have that position, that's the actual position we want our cursor to be on, where our mouse would be appearing for the person using it. And so we say, okay, cursor transform position to this new vector. So let's save all of that. And then let's go back over here to our main camera. Remember is what we attached all this to. And we want to put the cursor here. Okay. And let's um, give it a shot. And there we are. We have no mouse, just a cursor. Awesome. So let's go ahead and, well, add some bullets. Let's make a gun shoot. So we already have our tank set up. Now, the assets we're using, again, they're all in the description. I'm going to go ahead and go into our sprites here, items. Nope, we want weapons and pick out a bullet. Shoot. And ooh, I'm liking this projectile for a tank. So I'm going to grab it and just kind of drop it here. Maybe. OK, that's fun. It didn't pop up there. Drop it there. There it is. OK. And then three and three. Now let's make sure we'll be able to see it because I bet. Yeah, it disappears on us. Let me do add sorting layer here and I'm going to do bullet. Now we would want this below HUD heads up display, but above player. Actually, I'm going to put it below player. I'm going to have it disappear under the player. So now head back over here. I should definitely label label our bullet and give it its correct layer. There we are. Let's drag it up and over right about here. Probably I'm not super worried about the size. Actually, that might be a bit big or the rotation. The rotation we're definitely going to be handling with script. I'm going to say two. Yeah, somewhat up to you how large you want it to be. I could be adventurous and do it 2.2. All right. So with this, though, we need a box collider. A nope, I want a capsule. And make sure you do 2D capsule collider. Now, if yours fights you, I'm going to double click here. And if I click on edit, it won't always let you. Okay. So what I often end up doing is instead of vertical, I'm going to have this. Let's see how we want to do this. Oh, yeah, we want I'm going horizontal. There we are. And I was thinking maybe that looks like a good size to me. And so that will be the area that it can collide with other objects, maybe even make a three if you're feeling adventurous. OK, and then we do need ooh, make sure to make this trigger. It needs to be is a trigger. And then we are going to want a rigid body on this. Uh, no gravity. No angular drag. Sprite. And what's negative two like? Yeah, sure. Negative two is great. And zero frex. All right. Now we're going to need a script for this. The script for the bullet is deceivingly simple because most of the actual script that that's going to control it is going to go in script under the main camera. However, let's go ahead and add the bullet script. I will continue my creative naming pattern. Let's see here. Assets, bullet scripts, scripts, drop. There we are. And for the bullet script, all we're really interested in is impact, right? So when the bullet hits something, we want the bullet to go away. So what we're going to do with that is if no, we need yikes. On trigger, enter 2D, and we do have a trigger, right? This, this is a trigger. I checked that to be a trigger. So on trigger, let me get this in here and I'll explain it a bit more. So private event on trigger, this is going to be triggered when it collides with, well, another collider. What are we going to happen? Well, if the collision dot game object collision here, that's going to be the collider of our, whatever we hit. So if the if that collider of whatever we hit is a game object, has a game object with the tag enemy. Right. And we're going to make that. We don't have it yet. So if they're an enemy, we're going to have the bullet disappear because then we're going to have it kill the enemy. But for now, that's all we need in the bullet script individually. For most of it, for most of the action taking place, we click back over here, we need it to happen within the main camera's script because it's going to control the projectile motion and the arc of our actual bullet. OK, just for safety reasons, let's go ahead and add something and give it the tag enemy because otherwise I'll forget. So I'm going to go into the robots here 
And they have this like pre-made robot thing. And that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to call it enemy. And I don't know, three. Is that too little? Does it look fearsome? Four? Sure. And uh, let's check out the sprite. We'll put it on the player's layer. And great. At least we have something named enemy for our now, so it won't throw an error if we play that in the meantime. Now, again, I'm going to head to main camera, and we've added this manager script to main camera. So over here, manager script is what we want to be looking at. And we're going to add a few things. First, actually, we're going to want a bullet prefab, which we can do easy enough. Assets. Create folder. Prefabs allow us to copy objects over and over again. And we're going to want that because we're going to have the game itself be duplicating the bullet as we shoot, well, more and more bullets. So here's our bullet prefab. I always actually name these prefabs so I don't get them mixed up. There's my bullet prefab. So we have target, we have mouse, we have cursor. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and do about here at the top. I'm going to do a public game object. Bullet prefab. And let's do a bullet speed. We could make this public so it's accessible in, in the inspector, but not really going to change it that much, but it is an option. And we might need the actual prefab of the weapon, of the canning. So, and by prefab, I mean game object. Let's do that as well. I'm going to do that right here. Not capitalized. There we are. And at this point, we want to know if the mouse is down. Because if the mouse isn't down, we don't need to calculate anything. We don't care. They're not shooting. We are fine. So that's what we really want to make sure is that we know whether or not the mouse is down. Let me just save all this. To do that, let's go ahead now and put in if. Okay. And so we're asking if this mouse button is down and zero is just the left button, the main mouse button. Now, if it is down, what do we want to have happen? First, we're going to need a vector three. We're going to use a float for distance. We're going to smush all that into a vector two. Well, I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to get going. Okay, and now we're going to need a function. So what did I just do? Vector three difference is going to be target minus cannon transform position. So wherever the mouse is minus the cannon transform position, right? Because the target is where the mouse is. So we're just trying to figure out the distance between now the actual diff well the difference of those the actual distance is going to be the magnitude of the distance and magnitude is just as you assume the size so we need to multiply that by four or two depending on the size of the screen the size of the canvas how it is being viewed then we're going to take that that distance and use it to divide by difference to figure out the actual direction something is being moved in or we need to move it in how are we going to get it to this spot how are we going to fulfill the difference well we're going to divide it by the distance we just calculated and then we're going to normalize it normalizing by the way it's just gonna keep all the vectors in the same direction but length of one maybe i'll just put a note something like that okay now we're going to need a function that actually is going to do the firing so let's go down here. I'm going to be creative as always with my naming and call it fire bullet, I guess. Yeah. So I'm going to create this fire bullet method. So now we need, well, the meat and potatoes of getting our weapon to fire. To do that, we're going to start with another uh, declaration of a game object. This is going to be in. Uh, this is going to be to instantiate a bullet object. I'm going to get some written in here and I'll explain. Actually, I'll call this template. All right, so what is this doing? First, we're making this game object temp bullet. Temp bullet is, an, is to instantiate the bullet prefab. We're making a object while the game is running 
And how we're doing it is cloning our bullet prefab. So we're going to clone that prefab as a game object. Then we're going to take its transform position and set it equal to the cannon. So we're going to start right where our gun is, right where the cannon is, is where the bullet, uh, the temp, the bullet, the temp bullet, the cloned bullet will start. That clone bullet will then be at the rotation equal to this. Okay, this is the going to be rotation Z is going to be what we pass up here, which we haven't done yet. And that will be related to the rotation of gun. And then temp bullet get component rigid body 2D. This is velocity, this is the speed, the direction times the bullet speed we set up there. And there you have it, we'll have a moving bullet. Now we need to call this function. This function or method is not going to be running without a function call. And we will do so inside of this if statement, if this mouse button done. So if that mouse button is down, fire bullet direction. Oh, and make sure we got to make sure if we haven't that this in the Canon script, we need angle to be public. So if it's private, I originally think I put mine to private. You want it to be public here for this. So with that set as public, Let's go back over here and we'll be able to access it. This is how I'll know I did it because I can put dot and write, uh, I mean, write angle and it will pop up for access. Okay. And so we're calling on fire bullet. We're passing it the direction that we've talked about up here and then that angle and hopefully it fires us a bullet. Let's save all of this, making sure. And let's try it out. And before we get to shoot things up though, let's go over to main camera because remember, we got to fill these in. So our bullet prefab right here, drop. And then our cannon, that's going to be this guy and drop. Also with this bullet, let's go ahead like we did with the cannon. I'm going to double click if you have a Windows machine. Oh, that's the actual prefab. I need to go to the sprites. I'm going to flip the sprite. If you have a Windows machine, when you double click, it will open the image editor. I imagine Mac does something similar. And all we're doing here is going, droop. oh, not down, droop, droop. just like that. And I'm done. I'll know because it will rotate automatically. All right, and that should be good. Double check main camera, everything's looking good there. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and now we can mess with, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this bullet because I don't need it. But I'm gonna go to my prefab, click here, and maybe I wanna do change the size, right? So maybe two five was a good plan. And let's try that out. So I could really just do the whole shooting thing forever. Notice though how many bullets do we have here, right? This is going to be an issue as the game gets larger and larger. It's a lot of objects to control. So let's go ahead and unpause. Let's take care of that. And then we're going to dive into hitting and impact on the enemy. Once the bullets are off the screen, once the missiles are off the screen, once the ammunition is off the screen, we need it to disappear. The computer doesn't need to keep track of it when it's way down here if no one's ever going to see or use it again. So for that, we're actually going to go into the script that's attached to our bullet. Mine's called bullet script. And I'm going to put back a void update function. In this void update function, it doesn't need to be private. We are going to put a simple script, but a powerful one, a needed one. So what I'm going to have here is, well, I'll get it in and talk about it in a sec. Oh, um, all right, let's make this more readable. I'm going to, let's see, two, wait, here's, uh, that should be a lowercase s. And then what do we want to have happen? So what this is doing is saying, hey, if the screen position of the bullet is equal, well, wait, first, the screen position is going to be equal to the camera main world to screen point. So we're just setting up the transform uh, to understand where it is in the world relative to the screen. So if the screen position dot X is less than zero, that means our bullets off the screen. Two of these lines means or so or what if it, the screen position dot Y is less than zero? Or what if screen position dot X is greater than the width or if it dot Y is greater than the height? That means it's off the screen and we're just going to have it be destroyed. That way the computer doesn't have to keep track of bullets long after they're gone. Let's take a look. And now notice they disappear instead of just piling up. All right, perfect. <laughs> And so in the next video, we will be messing around with having it actually impact our enemy. Let's 
make sure we can save the world with all these, well, missiles, bullets, projectiles that we can fire. Pow, pow, pow.